Back in November 2021, I made the very first video here on this channel talking about a little moment that happened almost 30 years ago in Coxider. With Coxider coming back up again this week, and that video being frankly awful, let's revisit Coxider 1994, one of the most significant world championships ever held. Coxider 1994 is highlighted by a certain specific microcosmic event, but it is also part of a large wider context, and to understand the significance of the day, we have to understand that context. A World Championships held in Belgium might not seem very surprising nowadays, but in 1994 Cross was in a very different place. Cyclocross in general was still very scattershot, the Super Prestige was established, but the World Cup had only just finished its first ever season, the UCI had only just started properly meddling with the sport. The last time the World Championships had ventured to Belgium was the somewhat disastrous 1986 Worlds in Lembeek. The course was far too heavy to race properly, even leading to former World Champion Klaus-Peter Thaler claiming that he would refuse to race on the course. Lembeek had also been effectively the final downfall of the last great Belgian, Roland Liboton. Since Liboton's last title in 1984, only one Belgian had managed to crown himself champion, Denis Debye in 1989. The flamboyant Debye had done so largely thanks to his, at the time, revolutionary ability to jump the barriers. But Debye was an outlier and lacked professionalism to really make it far. After Debye's 89 victory, no Belgian even managed to grace the podiums of the world. That four year stretch being the first time that had happened since the mid-1960s. In 1994, for the first time in a long while though, the Belgians had a fighting chance once again. In 1992, Paul Herreiges was an amateur cyclist, making his days up as a brickmaker. Despite some decent performances as a junior, he never managed to find professional backing. Eventually he received a first pro deal with Saxon in the late 1992. Herr Eigers would make his full season debut at the start of 93, and at the very first UCI World Cup ever, round one of edition one in Eschenbach, Switzerland, he would somehow be the man who won it. It's nigh impossible to find much about the race, but it was Herr Eigers who came out on top, beating Daniele Pontoni and Bert Breu. Herr Eigers would then go on to win round 2 and 3 in Eindhoven and Igor, and finished 3rd in round 4 in Lunhout, affording him the title of the first ever World Cup winner. The flamboyant Flandrien raced a frankly brilliant season, but coming into the World Championships, he was absolutely not the favourite. Where the already 31 year old Herr Eigers was flamboyant and excessive, the big favourite was a young killer, Richard Groenendaal. The Dutchman, junior world champion in 1989, was a man of laser focus, and his exploits in the sand and recent good form made him the out-and-out -out favourite, despite him just being in his early 20s. Italian Daniele Pontoni had arguably had the best season of everyone, winning the Super Prestige, but he found a course that wasn't really suited to his powers. The last man given a shot at winning would be Adri van der Poel, because you can never count Adri van der Poel out. The ever-dependable Dutchman was 35 at this point, and with 5 silver medals including 4 in the past 6 years, there was arguably no one who wanted to win this race more than Van der Poel. When the flag dropped though and the race got underway, it quite quickly became obvious that it was in fact the other Dutchman who was on incredible form. Grudendal shot off the line, almost certainly never to be seen again, taking out a huge lead even during the first lap. Bizarrely, the man second on the road would end up being Erwin Verwecken, a young Belgian, 22 years old, he was in his first World Championships too. That wasn't the Belgian people had expected. Herr Eigers and Van der Poel would end up racing in third and fourth, battling it out for what they thought would be the final podium spot. Herr Eigers, though, was born in the Kemper in Belgium, a place well known for its sandy grounds, and therefore was very well accustomed to the sand that was all over in Coxeda, and throughout the race, despite it looking like a procession for the Dutchman on Belgian soil at the start, Herr Eigers would slowly but surely close up, first dropping Adri, 
then jumping to Vervecken, then dropping Vervecken, and slowly over the course of the whole race, he'd close and close and close, until suddenly on the penultimate lap, there he is, Paul Herreigers is back in the race, and instantly he's back to being his playful self. With a pat on the back, a little hand to the shoulder, he signals to Groenendaal it was a good try, but not quite, in one of the most brazen attempts to challenge his rival that I think I've ever seen in cross outright. Having already been angered by the rowdy Belgian crowd's distaste for him, Groenendaal was now absolutely livid and he set off on an almighty attack, ramming himself across the course at a frightening tempo. A tempo that Herreigers was just about able to match. With Groenendaal tired out of his mind, Herreigers took his chance. He zipped up the first part of a small, non-suspecting dune before absolutely sprinting up the top, putting meters into Groenendaal within seconds. He was some five seconds clear, and that would be enough of a gap to hold all the way to the line. As he came soaring out the final corner, cue delirium from the fans and cue delirium from Herreigers himself. So joyous that he dismounts his bike. On or off the bike, Herreigers is the first one across the line and the Belgians are joyous as for the first time since the 80s, the Belgians have a world championship podium and more importantly, they have the rainbow jersey. Herreigers' victory helped set in motion a change in Belgian cyclocross. They were once again the top dogs and Coxider changed something within the ethos of Belgium almost, to the point where they became the nation they are today. Combine that with the behind the scenes work of Erik de Vlamink in the youth categories, leading through the likes of Sven Nijs, Bart Wellens and Erwin Vervecken who took third on the day in 94, suddenly Belgium were the major force and only a few years later, starting in 1998, Belgium would begin to dominate the sport, winning the Worlds in 98, 99, 2001, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and 2009. Whilst for the racers, the big inspirations tend to be de Vlamink and his leadership and Danny de Bie and his barriers, Paul Herreigers and Coxide in 1994 are the moment that the Belgian public came back on board and cross and came back into the world. 1994 Coxsider feels like the moment that Belgium grasped control of cross and wrestled control and haven't let go for the past 20 to 30 years. This race had a huge, huge impact on the entire immediate future of cross and not all of it was immediately obvious. Nor do I believe it was all immediately positive. The Belgianification of cross is something that I personally think is quite dangerous to the future and the coming internationalization again now is something that I think is necessary and this harmed the sport a little bit despite it being in its commercial heyday during its biggest Belgian era. Nonetheless whatever impact this race may have had on the future, negative, positive, whatever you want to call it, Coxada 1994 is a huge touchstone of cross and it's a huge turning point as well. With this race, Coxider cemented itself as one of the best circuits to race around in all of cross. And now with the Herreigers down, named after the place where Herreigers did his attack, the Albert down with a similar name, named after Niels Albert and his world championship exploits as some decade ago, Coxider is steeped in history and it is ready for much more history to be made in the near future as well. So I thought I'd try something else for today, talk more about races, because I saw that mentioned in the comments a few times and I thought, you know what, let's let's give it a go, there's a few good ideas in there. With Coxider coming up it felt like the appropriate thing. I don't know if it's worked though necessarily, I don't know if I really got the context and the story across the way I wanted it to. I hope it was clear, I mean if it wasn't then comment below, I'm happy to answer questions, I'm happy to give any extra knowledge that I'm able to find anywhere. 
If you did enjoy it, then let me know that as well, and I'll keep making more of these kind of videos. Stuff about maybe Hoka Haida coming up. I've got enough ideas packed in the brain that we could execute in the future. If you did enjoy this and you want more cross-related stuff, feel free to subscribe as well, and we'll get more cross-related content coming out in the near future, in the build-up to the World Championships. With those coming up, there's a hugely exciting month coming up for Cross in general, and I'm happy to leave you ready to watch that. So from me, it's thank you for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.